Hello and welcome. I'm Mr. Boff and this is a video exploring the poem Valentine, a fantastic, interesting, complicated and rich poem by uh, Carol Ann Duffy. It's part of the Educast Poetry Anthology, so there are, there are two ways really you might encounter this poem. You might have it as the given poem uh, on the day of the exam, or it might well be one of the poems that you wish to compare to a other poem. Um, that is given to you on the day, so it's a, it's a really really useful one to know inside out. Uh, but having said that, there are already lots and lots of videos available online that uh, annotate the poem, give you things to say about it, language analysis, that sort of thing. So that begs the question: Well, well, where does this video fit in? Well, two things. Firstly, I'm going to offer you a reading of the poem today that's perhaps slightly different than what you perhaps have come across already online. And secondly, I'm interested in the structural features of this poem and how that relates to the poem's meaning. So I'm going to focus a little bit more heavily today on the structure, how this poem is actually organised on the page. And I'm going to think about the ways in which perhaps we shouldn't read this poem in quite such an earnestly straightforward way, that I think we've got a rather more comic even impish, ironic sort of poem here. It's a little bit more darkly playful than, than some readings often suggest. And um, I use Canva to, to make most of these videos, uh, or at least one of the things I use to make them. And I was having a look through and I um, used the search function looking through the photos that were related or tagged as related to um, Valentine's Day and, and, and romantic love. This was one of the images that came up. Okay, uh, and and this really got me thinking about the way in which romantic love is is depicted in our society, and the way in which um, Valentine's Day is depicted on, in our society, and the way in which uh, romantic love and Valentine's Day are so thoroughly uh, commercialized and commodified, and really how problematic that is, why that's an issue, and I think that we need to understand that to really grasp and understand where Carol and Duffy is coming from with the poem Valentine itself. And then it got me thinking about this um, quotation from Bakunin. You, you, if you follow Banksy on Twitter, Banksy tweeted this out some time ago uh, when his one of his paintings was kind of destroyed, when it was uh, bought at auction for huge sums of money. And it comes from the uh, anarchist um, Bakunin. And I think that that creative destruction, the creative dismantling of Valentine's Day, of particular cliched, uh, saccharine depictions of romantic love, I think that that sort of sits behind this poem. And so having this quotation in mind, the urge to destroy, is also a creative urge. That, that creative destruction and dismantling um, and disruption of uh, those cliché depictions of romantic love and, and the predominate on Valentine's Day. Uh, I think that's that's really, really important. Okay, so I've used a couple of these words already, so let's just quickly run through them. Commodification, so uh, the process by which virtually every now, every waking aspect and um, unwaking aspect of our lives is turned into something to be bought and sold. Okay, that's called commodification. Romantic love, love, desire, sex, all of these things are thoroughly commodified in our society. Um, and you see evidence of that commodification in the run-up uh, and on uh, Valentine's Day itself. So you go down the seasonal aisle, as they call it these days, which is slightly nauseating, of a supermarket, uh, and you'll see enormous stuffed teddy bears holding hearts. You'll see mugs with completely unfunny um, messages on, roman supposedly romantic messages. And th th this is the kind of stuff that we, we've, we're sold. Um, we, you know, you, you'll be able to buy a meal for two that's supposedly romantic. And all of this trash that, they're, that they're, you know, people are trying to sell us, that's commodification. That Romantic love is commodified. Uh, and Valentine's Day is one of the ways in which it is commodified, is a, is a kind of great example of that commodification. And often hand in hand with commodification is, is the, the reliance on cliche, the reliance on unoriginal, predictable um, presence and romantic tropes, the, the, all of the uh, tediously predictable and unoriginal uh, romantic gifts that are uh, discarded or rejected over the course of the poem. Uh, that, that we, we need to understand that word cliche. 
And then finally, confrontational. How strange to have the word confrontational in a poem uh, called Valentine and ostensibly about romantic love. How strange to think that this is going to be a confrontational poem, a poem that seems to be on one level about gift giving, although it's a rather strange gift, isn't it? That uh, gift of an onion. Um, to think that we would confront our loved one. There's lots to think about there as well. And again, possibly one of the reasons, given how seemingly confrontational this poem is, one of the reasons maybe why we shouldn't take it at face value in such an earnest way. Okay, who is uh, Caroline Duffy? Well, students often um, don't do a great job with this contextual material. Okay, this is just interesting to know and will help us with our understanding of the poem but it's not to be crowbarred into an essay. When students find out that context is um, an assessment objective that is assessed in this particular exam, there's this desire to, to force contextual material into uh, the analysis, but it should enrich it. So let's think about some of these things. Well, she um, often writes from outsider perspectives, and there's certainly something unusual and different and intentionally different about this particular approach and depiction of romantic love and then but but what i think is most interesting there is that that final bullet point i like to use simple words but in a complicated way there are some interesting things going on with diction with you know seemingly non poetic diction in this poem um it sort of uh, moves between those moments of um, what we might call poetic diction, so the reliance on um, images of the moon and figurative language and all those sorts of things. And yet, there's also colloquial, seemingly rather ordinary language, as well as the extremely ordinary uh, image of the um, of the onion. Okay, so we've got some some interesting things there to think about about how Caroline Duffy, uh, in her poetry, will will kind of move between those uh, poetic and supposedly non-poetic forms of language. And like many modern poets, simply doesn't accept that there's a there's a demarcation between those two things. Some of the other poems in the anthology are are very very clearly attempting at only using poetic language in inverted commas uh, and won't have anything to do with supposedly ordinary language. But Caroline Duffy is a modern poet uh, doesn't accept that, and so moves between seemingly poetic, elevated sort of diction and then uh, much more seemingly grounded uh, everyday colloquial language too. Okay, so we've got a poem, it's called Valentine. You think of Valentine's Day, you think of Valentine's gifts, you think of love hearts, you think of um, all of the things that I've mentioned in the seasonal aisle, okay? You think of uh, cliched, entirely boring and predictable uh, romantic gifts, but we've got something different here. And I think, uh, to go back to that image of the seasonal aisle, we've got a poem that, that uh, figuratively or metaphorically wants to take the, um, the stuffed toy you know, the £20 teddy bear holding a heart and shred it, okay, and create something new. Remember, creative destruction, that's what's going on with this poem. So, it starts off very unusual. Uh, single line stanza, okay. Not a red rose or a satin heart. It starts with what it isn't or what's not being given. So we've already got this desire to to reject, to kind of destroy those expectations, to subvert those expectations. And that's why I think that this poem is slightly more comic and playful than people uh, often assume. So it's turning its back on um, traditional depictions uh, of, of romantic love or tra traditional gifts that one might give to um, uh, a lover. So no red roses, no satin hearts, none of that, none of that cliched, commodified nonsense. So what, what are we going to be given? I give you an onion. What an interesting opening line, okay? Again, it, it, sort of unadorned uh, lines. The use of end-stopped lines is particularly interesting as well. Pausing, reflective, um, slows obviously down the, the pace of the poem and makes every single line seem more uh, deliberate, possibly, dare we say, more confrontational. Okay, and there are all these very strong declaratives. It is a moon wrapped in brown paper. Okay, this kind of uh, certainty that seems to be implied in these uh, in that uh, very famous metaphor. But if we think about the poem structurally, this this opening stanza, and we do want to think about the poem structurally because a lot of um, comments focuses purely on the language. But if we think structurally, that word promise in this opening or second stanza, technically. 
that word promise it's like the the the, the opening or the the beginning of a relationship relationships at the start are full of promise but we all know in life promises are broken sometimes so I think that's a very interesting word and interesting to think about this poem almost following the structure of a relationship we've got the excitement we've got that kind of sensuous almost kind of erotic excitement as well with the careful undressing of love and um, that promise that kind of the promise of desire that excitement is that going to give way though to something else is that going to be sustained or is as we find out it going to go in some rather darker but we might see slightly more authentic realistic directions okay and again we've got great structural features going on here here this is where we're talking about it being confrontational I find this confrontational um, tone that you know here take this onion I, I think that's that's comic I think that's funny as is the the, the sort of really intense negativity will blind you with tears like a lover. What a thing to say in a poem called Valentine. We've got that creative destruction going on again. And the certainty of those modal verbs. Not it might blind you with tears, it will blind you with tears. That this is this is where it seems all relationships, or at least this relationship, is gonna go. Is it gonna is it gonna cause tears? It's gonna cause upset. Uh, it will make again that certainty your reflection a wobbling photo of grief. So we've already gone from promises lights like the careful undressing of love to blinding us with tears, making our reflections a wobbling photo of grief. We've already had structurally that enormous change, that kind of pivot away from the promise and the excitement of um, a new romantic relationship perhaps into a much darker, more upsetting, literally upsetting direction. And then, and I think many um, videos online don't don't make enough of this, tend to skirt over this. Look at the placement of this line on the page within the poem. Bang, slap in the middle, okay? It's a uh, single line stanza, it's right there in front of us, right in the middle of the poem. I am trying to be truthful. Now, I think that when you simply glance at the poem, yes, your eye might be drawn to the, to the start of the poem, but you also, as you feel kind of inexorably drawn to this strange single stanza, single line stanza right in the middle of the poem. And we've got this this kind of confrontational message. I am trying to be truthful. I am trying. Implicit, obviously, within that is the fact that, ah, well, I might be failing here. Maybe this is a line exploring the impossibility, the impossibility of writing about romantic love about these kind of human relationships in, 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 a, in a truly truthful way. So it's almost like right in the middle of the poem, inserted, interrupting the flow of the poem, is this it's almost implicit partial admission of failure the, of the whole enterprise. And that's what I love about this, is it kind of comically undermines the poem itself. I'm trying to be truthful, but this might not even be truthful. Okay, uh, this poem itself might be a, a kind of uh, glorious failure. Okay, how great is that? Like romantic relationships uh, can often be a kind of you know glorious failures. So think about the way that that's inserted in, 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 into the middle of the poem, interrupting the poem and its flow. And then we go back to this uh, repeated structure, not a cue card or a kissogram operating as a kind of um, uh, parallel uh, example of parallelism, a, a, a um, repeated um, structure within the poem, not a cue card or a kissogram. Again, rejecting all of that trash that you might buy in the run up to uh, Valentine's Day from the, uh, uh, the seasonal aisle of a supermarket. Okay, I give you an onion. It's fierce kiss will stir in your lips, possessive and faithful as we are, for as long as we are. So again, strange, are we moving, thinking about the structure and organisation of the poem, are we moving now in the direction of staying together, but recognition that maybe the relationship is not going to last forever, for as long as we are. How strange in a poem called Valentine to raise the spectre or the ghost of the relationship's failure within that poem, within a poem called Valentine. Um, we've got some wonderful ambiguity around words like possessive, okay, which positive, oh, not really, it's frightening, unsettling, uh, kind of claustrophobic feeling, okay, feeling trapped, 
Again, it's a strange sense in which this language of negative, upsetting, or even kind of creepy, um, unsettling language is, is, is being used. So as we're moving through the poem, we've had the promise of love, we've had tears and the upset of love, now we've got people staying together, uh, there's passion, the fierce kiss, it's just like the, the taste and uh, smell of the onion remains on one's lips if you eat it, okay? Um, so too will the sort of relationship linger, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Amb ambiguous, isn't it? It's not entirely clear. Uh, we're, and and now, as we continue through the poem, we've got even more confrontation. These these commands take it, okay? What a strange thing to include in a poem about romantic love, uh, almost foisting or forcing the gift uh, on the recipient. Great image now, okay? So we've gone from just if we're thinking about the structure and sequence of the poem, we've got the promise of love, the tears, and the upset of love the passion, staying together for as long as we are, okay? So again, as I said, raising the possibility of not staying together. And next, we've got references to weddings, marriage, staying together. But just as we've heard um, with words like possessive, we've got words like shrink. It's platinum loops shrink to a wedding ring. So is this now a sense of feeling trapped, feeling... Um, again, this sort of weird claustrophobia, this sense of um, a, la a loss of freedom, uh, almost imprisoned. The, the image of the, the loops of the onion, the rings of the onion shrinking like a wedding ring around the finger, tightening around the finger. A really, really unpleasant, um, odd image. Okay, And again, one reading of that is to see that at face value. Okay, this is a criticism of the institution of marriage. It's restrictive. There's a loss of freedom. But it's also kind of funny. And perhaps this is my own dark sense of humour, but I even find the final few lines kind of funny. So, lethal. Its scent will cling to your fingers, cling to your knife. Now, that's not a particularly um, pleasant bit of uh, olfactory uh, kind of imagery. Its scent will cling to your fingers. Okay, that that's not attractive when you think about the smell of an onion. Okay, and that sense of, and that the repetition of the word cling, perhaps harking back to the word possessive um, from uh, from earlier on in the poem, and then ending the the poem with the word knife. Okay, this is a poem called Valentine. It, the poem was um, uh, originally written as part of a celebration of Valentine's Day uh, for a radio station, okay? And how interesting and, and funny to think, well, I'm going to write a poem called Valentine and the last word in that poem is going to be knife. I think there's something kind of darkly comic. Go back to that Bakunin quote about creative destruction, about the urge to destroy is a creative urge, okay? I think that's what's going on here. You know, taking apart all of the tired, commodified, commercialized, cliched, trite nonsense of Valentine's Day and its depictions of romantic love. Taking that apart, cutting it to pieces, and producing something new, okay? Not satin hearts, okay? Not a cute card or a kissogram, but an onion. And and, and, and the, the horrible reference or implication of violence at the, at the end of the poem. Is this also structurally kind of sequenced around the relationship going from marriage to deep kind of acrimony, ending in violence, ending in either kind of figurative violence of divorce or literal violence, murder, killing one's partner? Is this where romantic love ends up? Is it romantic love that can drive us to kill? And again, there's something kind of funny about putting that in a poem called Valentine. So I think we should see this, not one reading, perfectly legitimate reading, is to see this as a sort of earnest exploration of love, to see this as, um, you know, a sort of, I suppose, an attempt to challenge, uh, as I say here, attempt to challenge the way. Uh, we see romantic love and depictions of romantic love. Interestingly, um, structurally, you know, uh, Caroline Duffy doesn't use sonnet form, um, doesn't do many, if any, of the things that we would ever expect uh, in a love poem. So it's definitely challenging, it definitely is confrontational, but 
Is there something comically honest about the poem? Is this funny? Should we see Carol and Duffy as, in a darkly humorous way, playing with the idea of what a romantic poem can be, about what a Valentine's Day poem could be? And, and I think that that's a really fruitful way of looking at it, that we shouldn't necessarily just read this in such a straightforwardly earnest way, but to think, actually, I think Caroline Duffy's having a bit of a joke here, having a bit of a, uh, a kind of blackly comic laugh at the nonsense, as well as the almost the kind of national deceit of uh, Valentine's Day. So, a couple of things to think about there, then. A couple of things to ruminate on, to reflect upon, thinking, OK maybe we are reading this poem in a way that is too straightforward. Maybe there's a way of seeing this poem in more comic terms. And does that benefit our reading of the poem more generally? I would think so. Is this poem structured in a way to reflect uh, and explore the kind of trajectory of a relationship from kind of sensual excitement and promise at the beginning to murder at the end? And again, is it is the choice to make the final word of a poem called Valentine knife is that straightforwardly an attempt to be kind of confrontational and challenging or and maybe this is something to think about is Caroline Duffy and the poem seeking to be rather more comically honest about what love and relationships are actually like Okay, I hope this has given you a little bit of uh, food for thought. I hope that it's given you some new ideas and ways to approach this poem. Like I say, lots and lots of videos available online um, focusing on the language and on picking things in, in loads of detail. So I wanted this to be a little bit different, offer something uh, new and separate to that. So by all means, make sure that you know you understand and you've been through the poem line by line. But also if we're just thinking a little bit more about the structure and organisation, the narrative or story of this poem, and also its tone. Is this a little bit more humorous than we, we might uh, have first thought? So, I hope that's been useful. Uh, I've been Mr. Boff, and as ever, thanks very much for watching, and uh, it, it would be completely wrong of me to say uh, anything other than please like and subscribe. See you later.